Hey folks, Dr. McCarthy here, and I just want to take a couple of minutes. It's real important that I get this information out, and uh, when we're done, I'm going to share it up, obviously, on my Facebook page, uh, but I'll also have it on my uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, just a great report that I saw, and uh, if you stick with me, just a couple of minutes, I'm going to be very quick. Uh, at the end of today's video, I'm going to tell you the secret to reading food labels. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Dr. Joe Alamo, posted something earlier today from a really sharp dude, one of the smartest MDs I know, Dr. Mark Hyman. And Dr. Hyman's got a new book out, Food Fix. And in the book, he talks about the tax dollars that our taxes that go to pay for uh, subsidies for farmers and for, for um, you know, for crops and some of the things that we talk about here are, you know, the things that we look at, like high fructose corn syrup and soy oils and, you know, genetically modified wheat. Now, we all know these things are not necessarily good for us, and there's this big push now to learn how to read labels, and you have to look for this, and you got to look for that, and I'm going to give you the secret to it. Um, but th there was a really cool study put out by the CDC. Again, you know, the federal government takes our money, subsidizes um, the, the production of these, um, um, this, basically these genetically modified foods. The CDC does a study and says that uh, over 10,000 patients, 10,000 people, the folks that have the highest intake of federally subsidized food, corn, soy, and wheat, had a 40% greater risk of becoming obese does this make any sense? We're spending, uh, taking my money, subsidizing this genetically modified food, which puts a greater risk on the folks who eat this stuff. I didn't see that study make it onto the evening news. Uh, they've got a greater likelihood of developing more metabolic diseases, more visceral fat, obesity, uh, more type 2 diabetes, a lifestyle issue. Um, higher levels of C-reactive protein and homocysteine, more inflammation, and inflammation drives all the diseases that we know, heart disease and cancer. And our tax dollars are going towards paying to produce this food. Uh, another point he brings out in the book, really great. 2% of our land is used to grow fruits and vegetables. 2%. Yet 59% of our land grows commodity crops. Corn, soybean, wheat, genetically modified stuff that leads to greater risk of ill health and obesity. And we're paying for it and then on the other end we're eating it and we're worried about health insurance and you know Obamacare and Trump care. I've talked about that in the other video. Um, the last one was uh, the last video was on gluten, the dangers of gluten. Is it is it healthy to go gluten free? Well you as long as you know how to read your labels, right? Wrong. Here's the secret. If you have to pick up food and sit there and scan the label, if you have to look at what's the ingredients you should just put that back on the shelf and don't eat it. You should eat food that doesn't have ingredients. Hey, Billy, what's up, buddy boy? You are long overdue for your next visit, man. Come and see me. Uh, say hello to the wife and the kids. Buy food that doesn't have an ingredient list. You know, get get meats and buy the you know the best stuff that you can. The best stuff that you can afford. You don't have to go extravagant and buy you know, organic everything. Uh, or Organic, the, la the label organic is even falling apart nowadays where it used to mean something and now our stupid labeling laws are getting worse. You know, now it's like, well, if it says organic, it means mostly made without chemicals and pesticides. It's wishy-washy, you know. Buy the best food that you can, but buy stuff that doesn't have ingredients. It's going to make an enormous impact on your life and your health. Hopefully you find some value here. Uh, like this video, share this video, comment down below. I've been more than happy to answer any of your questions here. Um, hopefully, you know, you can follow along. If you have any questions, shoot them down below and I'll talk with you soon. Thank you. God bless. Wait, Billy, go. You got a question for me? I'm doing a video by myself. I got, I got patience in here. Michelle is uh, running around. Horns are going off. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Ask me a question. You're not typing fast enough. 
I saw your uh, your your t-shirt stuff. A little shout out for Billy's t-shirt, Maverick. I think it was Maverick. Uh, why are the better for you foods so much more? That's a great question, Billy. That's a great question that people ask here. But really, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, it's that the foods that are not good for you are dirt cheap. And that's the way they, they like to make this stuff. If you can find a, a, a cheaper way to, to make food by adding crap to it, then the profit margin goes up substantially. So the processed food, because they're churning out, you know, a, a million boxes of Cheerios a day. I'm just picking on Cheerios. I don't know why. So they can mass produce this. It's easily, uh, easily done. But if, if there's real food, real whole food, that a guy right here in Greenville is growing and he has to take down to the farmer's market. You know, it's a little bit more challenging for him. He can't lower his price the way they can because he's also not being, you know, subsidized by the federal government to grow this genetically modified crap. So, you know, good question, but look at it the other way around. It's that the crap is cheap because it's mass produced. All right, cool. I'm glad you, you got your weight in there for me. Um, hopefully I will see you soon. I appreciate the time and I will talk with you all.